I was more afraid of the dark at age 22 than I was at age two because I, I was afraid of that moment where you set your phone aside and you lay there and you try to fall asleep and how much that darkness can feel suffocating because you're so afraid of who you are. We have to go back to the beginning and look at young, outgoing, socially chaotic, somewhat dangerous Joel. I was so concerned about my reputation and, and so much more concerned with, with how people viewed me that I was fresh pickings for this culture of death, this hookup culture, this culture of use. And at the end of my high school career, I started dating a girl that I would end up dating for five years. I had the, the good job. I had the relationship, the money, the security. I had my own place. I had everything that the world said would make you happy. I realized every night that I had to go to bed and lay in the darkness that I was so alone and so unfulfilled. Being 22 years old and, and having everything that the culture said would make you happy and for me to not be happy was confusing and alarming and scary when you're not feeling fulfilled enough during your day, and then you have to sit in that at night, every single night. I had to be on my phone or on my computer up until the moment that my eyes started to close and I started to fall asleep because any darkness at all was so scary. I couldn't handle the silence. That led to coping mechanisms and this scroll, scroll, scroll type of mentality. I had everything in line to move forward, get married, um, start a family, but it didn't take long for pornography to completely tear that relationship to shreds. I started cheating on my girlfriend. A really good girl who didn't deserve any of that. It was a cry for help, just like to feel anything, to feel remorse, to feel guilt. No matter what kind of relationship I tried to have with a girl, uh, whether that was long-term dating, whether that was short-term dating, whether that was a one-night stand, no matter what I tried, I was empty. Whatever facade I put up, um, it could never sustain me through the night. Being told, like, hey, the person you're gonna spend the most time with for the rest of your life is yourself, freaked me out. Praise God for the campus ministry department at Michigan State because they, they kept me around long enough for me to go on a retreat. When I was able to walk into the sacrament of confession and understand what was happening for the first time, I, um, I got hooked on, on God's love and mercy. When you feel like the worst version of yourself, you can walk into the sacrament of the confessional and, and God won't say, no, 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 you aren't the worst version of yourself. God, God says, I love the worst version of yourself. My son, Jesus Christ, died for the worst version of yourself. And in, in adoration for the first time, feeling the Holy Spirit overwhelm me with love and tell me that it's okay to walk away from this relationship and decide who you want to be by yourself. And that's what I did. I just wanted to, to, to be able to look in the mirror and respect the man looking back at me. And so I started, I started that recovery process breaking the addiction. And every day I practice chastity and every day I strive for holiness and I strive for the heart of Christ, I become more and more myself. And I look back on that man five years ago at age 22 and he's just so lost. I love speaking in schools because there's a chance, right, that God will work through you in such a powerful way that one of those students is pulled out of a darkness that they didn't know how to get out of to pick up this cross and to, and to do missionary work with the Culture Project is, is more fulfilling um, than anything that I've ever done in my life. It's, it's so freeing to, 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 to fight for people, uh, to fight for love. And I can let these men know that no matter how many times they fall, they can always get back up. And that feels pretty dang good. I mean, in five years to be so separated from that hell, crazy. <laughs>